Jansen can take to this game, depending on what strategies he sees from Patrick. Well, here are the leads from both of our competitors here in the semifinals. That is the Maridon next to the Iron Hands for Jan, bringing up the fake out pressure from that Iron Hands immediately, as well as getting the Quark Drive boost. Patrick, however, has led the Choice Scarf Urshifu alongside the Calyrex. And we already see in the back that Rillaboom, extremely common to switch that Rillaboom in as soon as the Maridon hits the field to change that terrain and make sure that the Hadron engine is not going off. I love how Patrick led with two of the most powerful physical attackers on his side of the field as well, because that gives him the opportunity to choose which one he wants to keep on the field when he switches in that Rillaboom to reset the terrain. I think if you think that your opponent is going to focus in maybe on that Urshifu, knowing that a fast close combat could threaten significant damage to the opposing Maridon, you switch in the Rillaboom for that slot. If you're worried that your opponent's going to focus in on your Calyrex, you can switch it in for that spot. It's a very offensive start to the game, but there's such an easy defensive pivot as long as you assume that the fake out is the move of choice on the Iron Hands, but well, it's not. No fake out at all, just a Draco Meteor coming out from the Maridon, locked in with the choice specs, but losing the Hadron engine boost, but also the Drain Punch following up from that Iron Hands, easily able to pick up the KO on that Rillaboom on the switch. And however, that is a Glacial Lance coming out and that's a one hit KO onto the Maridon. And that means both terrain setters are gone. Jan has lost his restricted. Patrick lost a Rillaboom and got a chilling nay boost on that Calyrex. Losing the Maridon is huge in this matchup for Jan, as that means the Iron Hands no longer has access to the attack boost that we saw Quark Drive provide, and otherwise gives Patrick the opportunity to slow gameplay down. Yes, there's no more fake out available to him, and he will have to worry about this Urshifu Dark on Jan's side of the field, but given that Calyrex Ice Rider could terrestrialize here to avoid that Dark type weakness, you only need one turn here, maybe two turns to find a way through the Iron Hands and then set Trick Room up for your end game. Because looking at the possible Pokemon left for Yawn, if it's the Chi Yu in the back, you want to have Trick Room on the field because of that Choice Scarf held item. Mm -hmm. If it's the Ferrigoraph, yes, it can twist the dimensions back to normal, but that'll take time. And if you're able to sneak in another KO and get another Chilling Nay boost on that Calyrex Ice Rider, that's time that the Ferrigoraph probably won't be able to find. Yeah, and the Ferrigoraph doesn't have the electric terrain to use that electric seed, so it's going to start taking big damage from any attack from that uh, Calyrex. So, Jan is just trying to maximize damage out of this single strike Urshifu, going to go ahead and terrestrialize to the dark type, trying to deal as much as possible before taking any damage. Patrick will also be protecting the Calyrex by uh, terrestrializing into the water type, removing the weakness to that dark typing. So Jan has increased the damage of dark type attacks, while Patrick has removed some of its, his weaknesses to the dark type attacks. We'll go ahead and protect this turn. We'll be protecting damage only from the Iron Hands because of the Urshifu's ability to hit through the Protect. Dark, the single strike Urshifu is able to survive a single surging strikes outside of rain and without terrestrialization on Patrick's own Urshifu. We'll hit through the Protect with that Wicked Blow, but that is not even 50% damage. Oh. Jan, though, gets a big hit onto the, the Surging Strikes, uh, Rapid Strikes uh, Urshifu with that Wild Charge, picking up a one-hit KO there, not falling for the Protect. That was a great play there from Yan, recognizing that the Wicked Blow into that Calyrex Ice Rider was essentially free damage. Mm -hmm. Would not pick up the KO in one turn, but certainly would threaten a knockout in two turns. And by protecting that Calyrex Ice Rider, Patrick was predicting the double up into that spot, hoping that the Urshifu then was guaranteed to outspeed the opposing Urshifu and pick up the KO in two surging strikes onto that Pokemon. Because that didn't happen, you do have 
some option here to try and go for a KO with a Thunderclap into the opposing Urshifu if you think it's not going to Sucker Punch. But I do think that this Calyrex is in a lot of danger because even if that does play out and the Urshifu is KO'd, we've seen how much damage the Wild Charge did mm -hmm. from that Iron Hands. And given that it's at below health, it's really going to struggle to take that attack. Yeah, another Wicked Blow isn't going to be enough to knock out this Calyrex on its own. We'll need help from the Iron Hands. So instead, targeting down the Raging Bolt, which is going to go oh. after the Iron Hands. One turn of grassy terrain recovery is enough for the Iron Hands to survive and then picks up the KO onto Calyrex that we saw was going for the Trick Room. And that unfortunately means that Patrick is not going to be able to maintain control of the speed in this game. It means that that Urshifu single strike is the fastest thing on the field. And even though that Iron Hands is going to go down, Jan gets a free switch to whatever is in the back, any of which, looking at this team sheet, can take out that Raging Bolt. And given that Yon is in this position, you want to pick a Pokemon and a move that is guaranteed to connect. You can try and go for another Wicked Blow into the opposing Raging Bolt, but then you do t run the risk of being hit by the Thunderclap beforehand and getting knocked out there. We don't see that priority attack again from Patrick. Instead, Helping Hand Wicked Blow will connect with the Raging Bolt for the KO, and Yan Sim is one win away from competing. Much easier of a matchup for the Iron Hands and for that Maridon. You think that trying to pin that position for Yan onto Patrick's Calyrex is going to be a critical part of this matchup for all the games that we'll see. All right, well, Yansim is going to go ahead and lead the same Pokemon, going to be the Maridon and the Iron Hands, while Patrick has led the Rillaboom this time around, which will overwrite the electric terrain with the grassy surge and set the grassy terrain. That causes the cork drive to wear off. It also means that Maridon has lost a little bit of its offensive pressure. And now this Rillaboom gets to be on the field and do something instead of just being fainted as soon as it switches in. If Jan decides to switch out the Maridon to reset the electric terrain, if it's going to be that Urshifu coming out onto the field again, we're going to see it lose its focus sash almost immediately. If the Maridon decides to stay in, maybe do some chip with the Volt Switch, maybe do some significant damage with the Volt Switch given this terrestrialization, that could be a huge adjustment for Yan. Honestly, now that it's dropped its ice type weakness, it's possible that it can just hang out on the field for a couple of turns, especially given the fake oh. out turn one from Yan. Well, clicking Electro Drift turn one here. Maridon is staying on the field, targeting down the Calyrex. Not enough. Without the terrain, the Electro Drift is not enough damage to pick up that KO. However, Iron Hands was able to fake out the Calyrex, which means that the Calyrex will not be able to do anything this turn. Now, the thing here is that Yan is now locked in to Electro Drift which means that if Jan wants to reposition, he'll have to hard switch out. But this Calyrex is not in a good place right now. It isn't, and Patrick, I think, tried to make a play based off what we saw in game one from Jan, where he forewent the fake out in favor of dealing that big damage. It was a great aggressive read from Patrick and potentially could have resulted in a knockout on that Iron Hands this turn had it not gone, gone for that fake out once again. And said Jan, even though he has the game advantage here, opting to play this matchup very safe that turn one, Ooh. which now allows him to play very aggressively in in this turn two. Well, but targeting down the Rillaboom, not targeting down the Calyrex with that Electro Drift. That means Rillaboom gets another Wood Hammer off onto Iron Hands, picks up the KO this time. Patrick is not gonna let two or three hit points stand in his way twice, knocks out the Iron Hands, and now Calyrex is able to fire off a single target Glacial Lance. So Maridon is no longer weak to the ice type, so is able to survive even with the single targeting, but now the damage is much more equal and that Iron Hands is off the field. And the Rillaboom still has access to priority. Grassy Glide as well, which should be able to pick up the KO on the Maridon from that range if Jan leaves it on the field. We do see that the Urshifu is once again brought to this matchup from Yon, which makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. That was the Pokemon that forced the water-type terrestrialization on the Calyrex Ice in game number one. 
Unlike game number one, though, with so much damage on that Calyrex, I don't think you go for that terrestrialization. Definitely not. You just have to try and sneak in as many Glacial Lances as possible to deal that chip damage and hope that the Pokemon you have in the back, which have not been revealed up until this point in time, can take you through towards winning the game. Raging Bolt is an extremely safe switch in here, knowing that Maridon is locked into Electro Drift. We'll be able to resist that four times over. And Urshifu actually just goes for a Sucker Punch, trying to block the Grassy Glide there. So it's an entirely free switch in for that Raging Bolt. Calyrex will go down here, but that is okay. Calyrex got a lot of damage off in that turn with the one Glacial Lance onto the Maridon. And you now buy a turn for either the Rillaboom to come in to threaten fake out pressure again, or this Choice Scarf Urshifu, which was not able to pick up the KO on the Single Strike Urshifu uh, with non-Terastalized Surging Strikes, but now you have potential here. You do have a lot of potential here with both of your Pokemon. And I got to say as well, this is the benefit to running a Calyrex Ice Rider alongside of other powerful attackers like the Raging Bolt, like this Urshifu Rapid Strike. The Calyrex Ice Rider brings so much pressure onto the field in and of itself. You're forcing your opponent to recognize the threat it brings turn after turn after turn. And when you pair that with those wood hammers with the grassy terrain, when you pair that with a booster energy special attack boosted Raging Bolt, the damage starts to add up so quickly, it's okay when your Calyrex goes down as you already have an advantage. Oh, and I really like this fairy terrestrialization on the Raging Bolt as well. The Maridon is no longer an issue with the Choice Scarf Urshifu out on the field, so that single strike Urshifu is going to struggle to break through both of the Pokemon that Patrick currently has out on the field. Urshifu on Patrick's side just cleans up the Maridon, knocks that Pokemon out, and takes the second KO for Patrick in this game, bringing our Pokemon count to even. Now, with that Pokemon off the ground, or off the, off the field, the Urshifu on Yan's side has to go for a close combat to try to deal some damage to that Raging Bolt. But now that it is Fairy type, it's just going to break the Focus Sash and bring it right back down to one hit point for its troubles. I know. I love how you called out the potential for a water type terrestrialization on the Urshifu on Patrick's side of the field. I do think that if you look at how he's been playing this game up until this point in time, doubling down to that hyper offense makes a lot of sense because you know you can remove the Urshifu and then you know that the Maridon is locked into Electro Drift. It has to switch to pick a different move and by the time it makes that pivot, you can find your way through it. But instead, Patrick making a very defensive play Play there with the fairy type terrestrialization to get the same result but in a way that's much more consistent yeah and look at all of that damage onto the Ferrigger wrap that psychic noise isn't even going to be able to pick up the ko onto urshifu so the two pokemon that patrick had in the back the raging bolt and the urshifu able to clean up this game after taking out that iron hands in the early game and again, this is one of the big things about this Maridon, the Choice Specs Maridon especially. You really want to be able to reposition it so you can move it in and out, uh, change moves as often as possible. The great benefit of that Volt Switch is it can pick up big damage and KOs and reposition so you can change moves when the Calyrex just got knocked out. Yeah, and we actually see Ooh. the adjustment okay. here, but it is the Farigarath in the lead for Jan. So gives him the ability to stop Fake Out yeah. But there is no fake out on the field. I, I understand it for, for a lead to at least protect the Maridon so you can get a Volt Switch off, deal some damage and reposition. But like you mentioned, there is no uh, there is no fake out here. The Ferrigraph is not blocking any kind of priority move. And instead, it's just going to be this Urshifu and the Calyrex uh, staring down the Maridon and the Ferrigraph. The Urshifu is holding a Choice Scarf, so it will be able to move prior to this Maridon. And the nice thing about the Calyrex in this position is 
while it still has the opportunity for a guaranteed protect, it is not threatened. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Jan go for a Volt Switch into that Urshifu specifically, sort of preempting the reveal of the Rillaboom, because you know it's in the back of Patrick's party. It is so important in this matchup. Mm -hmm. If you're able to remove your Terrain Setter prior to seeing the Rillaboom even make an appearance, you're just prolong prolonging the opportunity for the Electric Terrain. Yeah, I mean, this is, if you're on autopilot and you're playing this type of Urshifu team, you are U-turning and you are switching into the Rillaboom. So we'll have to see if Jan is going to go for that, to cover that option, because oh it does goodness. not look like Patrick go, went for that. Instead, Jan is going to just go ahead and boost the power of that Maridon with a helping hand. No. Helping hand in the terrain with the terrestrialization can be big damage, but there is no U-turn, it's just the close combat. That is damage onto the Maridon. So now, Urshifu has dealt damage to Maridon. Maridon oh went for the Electro Drift into the Calyrex! Into the Protect! That was so much damage! That was just oh, gone! Yon got so baited by Game 2. The slim amount of health that the Calyrex survived on in Game 2 meant Yon thought, oh, all I need is one more damage multiplier here, and that Electro Drift gets that KO. Let me bring the helping hand. And Patrick was just like, no. <laughs> I have a way to stop that entirely. Let me just protect here, and I'm just going to get close combat. And all of a sudden, Patrick is in such a commanding position. The Maridon has gone down with no damage dealt by that by that Pokemon. No damage dealt, and the Electra terrain can only remain for so much longer. Yon's entire team is built around this Maridon, supporting the Iron Hands, dealing a ton of damage. So even though we see the Psychic Noise, thanks to those defensive drops, take the KO on the Urshifu, that is a very okay trade to make if you're Patrick. Yeah, trading the Urshifu for the Maridon is a trade you will make many, many times. Now, this Verigraph, of course, was able to pick up that KO, and it's really going to depend on what Pokemon Yan has brought in the back. Previously, we have seen the Iron Hands and the Single Strike Urshifu uh, in both games one and game two. And the Iron Hands still seems like a very strong pull here because of its ability to function in Trick Room. Exactly, and you do have to worry as well if the Iron Hands does not make an appearance, that just makes Calyrex's terrestrialization into that water typing a way more easier choice. And yeah. I think by revealing the Urshifu this turn on the onside of the field, he's trying to get Patrick to terrestrialize that Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I don't think you necessarily need the terrain. Yeah. If you can trick your opponent into terrestrializing into a water type, wild charge, super effective, and that's the game. But we've seen Patrick in this situation before opt to terrestrialize the Raging Bolt. And honestly, again, the Calyrex Ice Rider is an incredible Pokemon, but it is not necessarily the star of this show. There are so many other powerful Pokemon Patrick has to carry him to the finish line. Patrick's powerful Pokemon includes this now Terra Fairy Raging Bolt just like in game two. But Jan is going for more damage multipliers, giving the clap, oh. clap, clap, clap for the Urshifu single strike, but not able to pick up even 50% of damage on that Raging Bolt and dropping its defenses. And this means that Raging Bolt just gets to fire off a Thunderbolt into the Farigarap, and this Calyrex gets to do whatever it wants. And what it wants to do right now is go for a Glacial Lance single target into the single striker Shifu to bring it down to that Focus Sash. Raging Bolt utilizing the electric terrain in its own favor. Probably didn't need the damage mm. boost to pick up the KO after the booster energy activating the protosynthesis there, but still a very nice timing there from Patrick recognizing that you don't need to necessarily remove the terrain until the Iron Hands makes an appearance. Now that we're in this position though, Patrick has the Pokemon advantage. Patrick has the ability to withstand another close combat without that helping hand boost on the Raging Bolt. I think you don't switch, make that switch until <laughs> your opponent makes it for you. Yeah, and Patrick can withstand the Wicked Blow without terrestrialization. 
there is the Thunderbolt going to go ahead and knock out that Urshifu. And the Iron Hands was the final Pokemon for Yan, so brings out the Heavy Slam into the Raging Bolt, but it can still survive that, and Calyrex has Glacial Lances. Iron Hand takes over 50% damage, and we are one turn away from Patrick Connors becoming our first finalist at the North American International Championships. Iron Hands is one of the most powerful Pokemon in the metagame, but it cannot attack both Pokemon at once. Patrick Connors coming all the way from Orlando, Florida, top 64 in those